Dear professors, teachers, parents, and my dear students, greetings from Kumaraguru College of Liberal Arts and Science, Coimbatore, India. A warm welcome to this first day of our international webinar series on digital and media literacy in this information age. As it's a duty of the education institution, class initiates this webinar in order to create awareness on media literacy, which is the need of the art. This webinar is organized by the Department of Visual Communication, Kumaraguru College of Liberal Arts and Science, Coimbatore, India. This event is partnership with UNESCO, Global Alliance for Partnership on Media and Information Literacy. The holistic education model of class is to build on philosophy of liberal arts education and to build a common understanding of the knowledge, skills, attitudes and values students need in the 21st century. Arts education blends different disciplines from sciences to social sciences, from business studies to literature and fine arts into a holistic academic canvas. Kumaraguru College of Liberal Arts and Science offers various program under the wings of 10 schools. School of Visual Communication offers BSc Visual Communication and PG Diploma in Visual Effects. We do offer Diploma in Journalism in a blend learning way. Please do check our website or, or visit our campus for details. Now, let me welcome Ms. Ananda to welcome our guest of today's webinar, Dr. Ferros from Kolkata. It's over to you, Ms. Ananda. Thank you so much, Professor Leo Gertrude. It's indeed my privilege and honor to be a part of this carefully curated international web series. To be honest, we as a part of our organizing team have simply been in awe looking at the massive range of registrations that we've received from across the globe, from five continents, as well as the length and breadth of this country. Of course, it's nothing but a testament of the sheer caliber of the experts who will be interacting with you all over the next few days. In this dark and gloomy pandemic, social media plays a vital role. And we've time and again seen how media in its various forms, from the television channels to social media, are affecting our day-to-day -day life. So it is indeed the need of the hour and our duty as a society to become media literate. So as an educational institution, the Department of Visual Communication, KCLAS, takes the responsibility of helping you become a media literate citizen and in turn encourage you to actively participate in public affairs with in-depth knowledge of how and where media sneaks into our lives. To kick off the series, we have with us Dr. Firoz Mohammed, the Director, College of Management and Technology, School of Media and Communication, NSHM, Knowledge Campus, Kolkata. I'm sure many of you from India would know about the illustrious credentials of Dr. Firoz. But for the benefit of our participants from across the globe, let me give you a brief introduction. Dr. Firoz started his career in media education from the capital city of Delhi at Indian Institute of Mass Communication. Over the past three decades, as a media researcher and educator, Dr. Firoz has held multiple portfolios in educational and developmental projects. He has been instrumental in establishing, designing, and implementing the curricula and setting up various departments in several premium media schools across Asia. Dr. Firoz's passion and areas of expertise are new communication methods, social media, media conversions, as well as multimedia storytelling and documentary filmmaking. In fact, 
He's presently working on a handbook of transmedia storytelling, which aims to include the sociology of storytelling, industry's best practices, and the technological dynamics of storytelling. The focus of today's session is key concepts and scope of media literacy. And I'm sure you understand why Dr. Firoz is conducting this session. His in-depth knowledge in this area is par excellence. I'm really happy to share this forum with you today, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Ananda. I'm truly blessed when my own student introducing me to the world. I'm truly blessed. Uh, Professor Vigila Kennedy, Professor Leo David, Professor Ananda Karthik, academic and non-academic staffs, and my dear students of Kumaraguru College of Liberal Arts and Science. It's an honor and pleasure to be with all of you to reflect on some of the key concepts of media literacy. I, I would like to dedicate this webinar to my professor, Professor Yogendra Singh. Professor Yogendra Singh was the founder of the Center for the Study of Social Systems at JNU when JNU started in 1969, 1960. Professor G. Parsasarthi invited him to set up the center. And today this center is 51st in the global ranking of sociology department. My academic mentor, my, my, my doctoral degree supervisor, I worked with him for nearly five years. I did my MPhil under him. I did my doctoral degree with him. Sir, wherever you are, you are with us. Professor Yogendra Singh was the member of PC, PC Joshi Committee Report, which is popularly known as Indian Personality of Television, 1982. And it was in the year 1982, this P PC Joshi Committee Report advocated integrative, interactive, and participatory model of communication. And this report, PCJC Committee Report, Indian Personality for Television, was an answer. It was India's answer to C. McBride Commission Report of 1980, Many Voices, One World. I dedicate this webinar to my professor. Coming back to media, media are integral part of human life. Media are most pervasive, and media are primary storytellers. There is something about powerful, engaging, and an intriguing story. And we all agree, and we all believe that a good story makes us empathize. Media are per persuasive educators. I have borrowed this term persuasive from Vince Picard's book, The Hidden Persuader, which was written in the year 1957. Vince Picard demystified the mysterious arts of advertising and exposed the hidden world of motivational research, the psychological technique that advertisers used to probe 
our minds to control our actions as consumers. Marshall McLuhan, the per pervasiveness of media, Marshall McLuhan referred telephone speech without walls. He referred phonograph music without walls, photograph museum without walls, and the movie, television, and radio classroom without walls. And now we are living in an age of online, global, 24 7 non stop convergent media. Now it's anytime, anywhere, and any place. Now it's non stop. Now it's 24 7. And now it's on, it's on demand. Media socialization, we're talking about media literacy here. Talking media socialization is very important. Socialization is the process of learning to be human. Media is responsible for what we know and how we relate to the world. And media mediates our relationship with social institutions. In today's context, our children learn almost everything from media. Media has become a dominant social institution and it has become the primary agency of socialization. James Stair called television as the, as the other parent. And this is also the title of his book. And the book, The Other Parent, looks into the explores into the explores inside the story of media's effects on children. One of the significant elements of media is media amplification. Ampli you can amplify message to any extent. Media amplification amplifications the impact factor. Media just do not provide facts and data. They also provide meaning and significance. They set the agenda and we follow them and we pursue them. The essence of the story and storytelling lies in its meaning. The essence of story and storytelling lies in the shared meaning. We are talking about we are living in a world of media narratives. Now, you are living in a world of media uh, uh, narratives. Uh, um, we are living in a, uh, uh, in a world of media narratives. Uh, uh, let's look at different media perspectives. Society cannot exist without communication, and communication cannot occur outside social system. Media affect the values and attitudes of those who use them, and values and attitudes of these users influence media. The power and possibilities of communication is, is immense. Truly, communication has the potential to liberate us. Media, uh, you know, sources of media messages. This is the message universe. Now, this is what takes us to the third perspective. And this particular, and I would like to use this perspective as a disclaimer. As media is structured and functions in relation to the social nexus, it must be viewed as only one of the many factors having bearing on individuals and social behavior. And if you agree and adhere to this idea, let's also adhere and agree to this idea. On the other hand, media educators cannot afford to ignore or trivialize the complex 
social, intellectual, and emotional functions of media in the lives of people. You know, let's not end up blaming media for everything, from mother to the obesity. Pro-social media, the research evidence, media use increase our cognitive and affective empathy. Our selfless concerns for the well-being of others, media is largely responsible for it. The other day, one of our juniors met an accident. And we received a message early morning at 6 o'clock that let's raise some funds so that we can help him. And after four hours, I got to know that the fund has already been raised. Social interaction, launching pad for social, social, you know, social interaction. And we also learn, we also accept a diversity and cultural pluralism through media. And cinema is, I mean, I, you know, we all, uh, cinema is one of the finest examples. Smartphones is a guardian story. How smartphones are lifeline for homeless people. But then why do, you, why do we debate media effects? Why media literacy? It was in the year 1882, Albert Robida, a French artist, drew a series of pictures that predicted what life would be in future. A screen on the wall would enable families to take a course taught by a teacher and watch a war all while safe, secure, comfortable in their living rooms. I will come back to the passivity of media later. We'll talk about that. Why media literacy? Because media gives rise to new complexes of activity concerned with manipulation of symbols. Fake is the new real. Misinformation and disinformation is rampant. Why media literacy? Decay of primary relationships, weakening adherence to social norms and values, gender commodification, crime and violence, degradation of professional values, I would like to specifically talk in the context of journalism. Bran McNair, according to Bran McNair, objectivity, newness, actuality and authorship. These are the four core values of journalism, which makes journalism a distinct cultural discourse. But looking at the current state of journalism, these core, four well, these four core values of journalism, how they are negated, how they are compromised, that's all right in front of us. Why media literacy? Airwaves are natural public resource and must be used for public good. The fate of public service television, the fate of public service media is under threat. Advances in technology, unseen consequences, disappearing cultural pluralism, indigenous cultures are losing its essence and significance. The Three undistributed virtues of media practices, accuracy, sincerity, and care are being compromised. The phone hacking case, the very infamous phone hacking case. And recently, during COVID-19 pandemic, the entire tablig controversy, they say, it's a new normal. I say it's a new abnormal. Never in the history of India, never in the history of Indian media, media ever paved 
way for common hatred amidst in the middle of COVID-19 pandemic. Why media literacy? I understand and I truly believe that the media literacy is a collective desire. The practices of media have been not always ethical. And if you ask me if, 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 if somebody will ask me how do I define ethics, I say, if something can hurt me, it can hurt others. No medium is excessively dangerous if we understand what its dangers are. And if we fail to develop our media literacy, we ought to get swept along the tide of media messages. Some of the key concepts here, the list is huge, but I will just focus on two, three, four. I'll focus on five key concepts. Most certainly, media carries ideological and value messages. Media construct our culture. Media are powerful when they operate on an affective label, that's emotional label. Media messages are manipulated to enhance emotional impact. Media effects are subtle, cumulative, complex, but real. Last but not the least, no one tells the whole story, so does media. And we're talking about how fake is the new real. So no one says media constructs reality. There is not a single reality. All media messages are constructed. Reality in media is constructed interpretation of rea reality. Very quickly. What is media literacy? Literacy is the ability to read and write. And thus media literacy is understanding media messages and creating media messages. Media literacy is the, is the ability to access, analyze, evaluate, and create messages across a variety of context. Access, finding, sharing appropriate and relevant information analyze using critical thinking to analyze messages create creating content using creativity with all awareness reflect considering impact upon our thinking and our, on our action and act that is working individually as well as collaboratively to share knowledge to solve problems being media literate so what it requires to be a media literate being media literate is looking beyond the frame. Being media literate is being a critical and creative media user, being an active participant in an agenda driven, media saturated, and media mediated world. Being media literate is being aware of one's own media diet. And being media literate is being aware of our information neighborhoods. Being media literate is understanding and the difference between the real and the real. Being media literate is to see and differentiate between the real world and the world manufactured by media. Manufacturing consent is a landmark work. Being media literate is seeing the bigger picture, going behind the frame to explore deeper issues. Invoking media sociology here, we need to look at the functions of media, the surveillance and the socialization functions of media. Applying social conflict paradigm, gatekeeping, the selection and rejection of content, why it happens. 
construction of reality symbolic interactionism is impact on social behavior feminist perspective the representation and portrayal of gender and postmodern perspective looking at media in the context of a rise of consumer society so media literacy invoking media sociology here media literacy is seeing the bigger picture and going behind the frames to explore deeper issues looking at the functions looking at the conflict looking at the symbols messages meaning looking at you know, you know taking uh, taking you know considering the feminist perspective that is representation and portrayal of gender and how and a postmodern perspective that is how a rise of a new society is uh, you know uh, media is largely responsible for a rise of consumer society i'm not getting into the negative fallouts of rise of consumer society uh, i mean uh, we uh, we do not uh, have so much of time and it's better that we concentrate on media opportunities versus media addictions media opportunities are good let's use opportunity to expand our shared experience media addictions are harmful avoid addictions to become a slave media skills versus media competencies media literacy is improving skills rather than improving competencies skills to take informed decisions with the information we are bombarded with skills to be an act active participants and an information provider when i'm talking about skills i'm talking about cognitive skills i'm talking about emotional skills i'm talking about aesthetic 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 skills i'm talking about the moral skills cognitive skills the ability to analyze compare contrast plots characters themes emotional skills ability to analyze portrayed feelings and emotions aesthetics skills ability to analyze artistic elements and moral skills analyzing moral values and implications last i mean you i mean you see you know uh, if if you all can see my uh, uh, slide here uh, there's lot of content and uh, this is uh, uh, i started uh, this uh, uh, this session you know dedicating this session to uh, my professor uh, professor yogendra singh and i remember in the year 2002 when we we were sitting together and he was looking at my final PhD uh, doctoral degree draft the concluding paragraph and my my doctoral degree is on prime time television and its impact on values so this particular draft the the final final draft the concluding concluding paragraph uh, i i remember uh, you know we edited this more than 15 to 16 times and for which i will always remain indebted to him till i am i am there in this world so concluding thoughts i am taking it directly from my doctoral degree the final chapter the concluding chapter the concluding paragraph and let me read out this for you the pervasiveness of media in journal and media with obvious loads of hidden and discrete agendas calls for an intensive and extensive efforts for a systematic media literacy education in india this is 2002 we are in the year 2020 18 years inserting media education into already crowded school curricula will definitely be a challenge but adults and children in specific cannot be left unprepared to deal with one of the powerful forces shaping their lives we are becoming passive media consumers 
And this is perhaps the least recognized negative fallout or as a dangers in media use. Media content can be used for varied and constructive purposes if viewed critically and used mindfully. Finally, only active, fully alert, an informed user of media can take advantage of the benefits of the immersive media experience. Today, we are talking about immersive technology. Today, we are talking about immersive storytelling. It was in the year 2002 when my guide, my mentor, while I was reviewing the last paragraph of my doctoral degree, he said, Feroz, why don't you use this word, word called immersive media experience here? I went to him with a draft benefits of media experience and he added immersive media experience and immersive media experience is all uh, immersive media experience is the future. It was in the year 2002. Today we are living in the year 2020, 18 years. If we have taken care, today we could have been a better media literate. Thank you very much. And thank you, Kumaraguru College of Liberal Arts and Science, for giving me the opportunity to uh, share some of my understandings on you know, understanding on media literacy. Now, any questions? You know, you know, I will be more than happy to to answer. I will be more than happy to reflect. Thank wow. you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. I really feel like I'm still that 17 year old student back in 2006 who was seated in your class during my first year of undergraduate studies. Your depth of knowledge is truly an ocean that I really want to keep learning from, sir. Okay. If the robust participation in the live chat boxes is a, is a testament of the excellent content in your session, I can simply say that this has been a huge success. But of course, we have some wonderful questions from our participants. We'll take on a few now since we have a lot of time. Uh, the question is on the on the screen. Let me read it out for your for you, sir. Um, this is from uh, Madhavan, Mr. Madhavan from National School of Journalism and Public Discourse, uh, Bangalore. Do you think basic fact checking school, uh, skills should be taught in schools as a skill course since we are headed towards a society which is going to be completely online very soon? If yes, what are the chances of implementing them and how efficient can they be? Uh Mr. Madhavan, this is a, a brilliant question. Uh, you saw in my presentation that it was in the year 2002. I, along with my mentor, my supervisor, advocated for media education in the schools. Now, please understand, the way media is affecting us is very important for us to take a collective responsibility and pursue you know i mean we need to uh, you know uh, to have media education in schools we really need to make it a movement we really need to we really need to make, make a movement and when it comes to fact checking i said real versus real today's children how they know what is what is real and what is real what is fact and what is what is fiction it is for them to know. So yes, truly said. But but in order to do that, in, in order to have media education at the school level, fact checking or media literacy, or or, or for that matter, news literacy, right? Uh, we need to have uh, you know a strong political will, and as you know, that the strong political will only come through a social movement, and that is why I see media literacy as a social movement and nothing less than that. It should be pursued as a social movement by all media educators. Yes. We have one more question from uh, a student, uh, Shivram Bajaj. 
being a mass communication student and a content creator for youtube and other platforms how can i leverage social media to share socially relevant messages without any kind of paid but just thought earned media ah sir ab aap dekhiye sir ah please look at us sir <laughs> no uh, no I, i'm thinking uh, uh, um please come again I, uh, this is this is truly it's on the screen too sir he is basically asking us how can i leverage social media to share socially relevant messages without any kind of pain any kind of pain but just thought earned media being a mass communication student and a content creator for youtube and other platforms how can i leverage social media to share socially relevant messages without any kind of paid and just thought on media uh, i don't know i i, I think uh, uh, you have to be a truly a media activist then in that case <laughs> but having said so having said so if you if you have a, a real a really socially relevant good quality content i think there will be somebody who would come forward and pay for it so uh, uh, but i think um, it's not that the socially relevant content are not being paid or or, or not being uh, not being promoted it is just the way we approach and is the way we take it forward true uh, we also have uh, media professionals also who are a part of the webinar sir there's someone from uh, pk productions who's asking what is the difference between media effects and media literacy media effects the, the, i mean very simple as as you know uh, media effects in common parlance refers to how media is impacting effectively and quantitatively uh, you know cognition the act of coming to know something so the cognitive impact affecting is is the emotional impact how media is affecting us and uh, uh, quantitatively how media you know uh, you know you know is is uh, persuading us to to take an action so these are the three three labels of Uh, you know media effects media effects happens uh, because of consistency frequency and intensity and when it comes to media literacy media literacy is uh, you know uh, media literacy is you know uh, what is this content is all about uh, uh, and to uh, what extent this content is useful for you or for the society and for that matter for anybody else uh you know the hidden agendas you know the meaning and significance of the particular content and uh, uh, you also know the implication of that particular content we're talking about the moral you know you know talking about we're talking about building different skills the cognitive skills the affective skills the moral skills the aesthetic skills so media skill uh, media literacy is analyzing um, analyzing uh, uh, um, the plot the theme uh, uh, uh media skill uh, media literacy is analyzing uh, uh emotions and feeling and sentiments portrayed uh, uh media media literacy is uh, uh analyzing artistic elements in a particular media content or a media product and uh, uh, moral skills is uh, analyzing moral values embedded in a particular media content and implications of such moral content so that's media literacy so uh, effect is how it is impacting you how it is affecting you and literacy is are you ready to read and use media for your own and for the larger good of the society that's media literacy so we have a uh, i mean it i think you've answered several of the questions through that one answer itself uh we have this uh, person parminder kaur from chitkara university punjab she is asking you her question to you is do you think media literally 
uh, literacy is only limited to the people who work in the field of journalism or media literacy is equally important for the general public uh, who blindly share fake whatsapp forwards or hate or hateful statements which has often led to um, you know social effects like mob lynchings killings does media literacy have any bounds no media literacy is not only for the media professionals no i was talking about uh, I, uh, you know when i talking about uh, uh, media sociology i i did talk about social conflict paradigm and while i was talking about social social conflict paradigm i was talking about uh, gatekeeping paradigm and gatekeeping is selection and rejection of content now gatekeepers so you have gatekeepers they select and reject content and selection of uh, and rejection of content happens with a purpose and it has its own consequences so so when it comes to media professionals so that's media literacy for them but when it comes to are uh, talking about children they should they should they should know they should be able to differentiate between real and the real not only that that the parents i mean children they have too many questions and when they go to parents asking those questions relating to media parents they have either they have they don't have uh, answers or uh, or or they are uncomfortable or they are, i mean so parents are equally supposed to be media literate Absolutely. media educators are supposed to be media literate let me tell you uh, those who I, I, I think i think if you ask me and if we have to uh, begin a media literacy campaign i would begin with media educators correct then, correct then i will go to media professionals then i'll go to parents then i'll go to schools then i then the last i will go to the children i tell you one thing i'll just let me share one anecdote while i was pursuing my doctoral degree so yes, i was interviewing some kids so i said uh, uh, given you an option what you would like to do they said they would like to go to the park and play with their uh, uh, friends second thing they said they would like to be home with parents with siblings and doing some activities third thing they would like to be with their parents and do something some activity watching television was the least concern for the children when i was doing my research that's one second thing i asked given you an option what you would like to watch on television and to my utter surprise 80% of the kids i was interacting i interacted with they said they would like to watch soft non violent cartoons i was asking i said okay in the prime time prime time that is 7:30 to 9:30 who controls the remote in the house I, i got to know that parents the elders in the family they control the remote and the kids are forced to watch those adults programs and the content so coming back to media literacy it has to be if you really want an if you really want media literacy to 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 have some impact and have some positive results it has to be done at several levels at several we all are stakeholders children are the primary stakeholders because they cannot differentiate between real and the real do not blame them parents are the stakeholders media educators are the stakeholders right so we all are the stakeholders so when we talk about media literacy campaign it has to go on, go on every level correct correct sir yeah. very true we have a research scholar uh, neha batra she asks how does one analyze advertising pre covid and post covid this is a very allied topic and i'm sure we have already had a very interesting discussion about this previously you should really talk to me you should really be touching upon this today sir yes yes uh, no i i think she is a research scholar and neha neha you are a research scholar and it seems you are pursuing your doctoral degree and you are analyzing advertise is it excellent pre covid and post covid now um 
I need to see your research objectives. I need to see your uh, see your hypothesis. I need to see your research questions, and then probably I I will be in a in a, in a in a comfortable situation to tell you more. But analyzing uh, analyzing um, and, uh, there can be different ways you can uh, you, you can analyze an advertising campaign. Now, for example, let me give you we use different appeals in advertising. Rational appeals, moral appeals, and emotional appeals. So one way of analyzing advertising campaign by by using and employing different appeals, All right? And uh, so that's one way of analyzing advertising campaign. Now, you if you want, if you're looking at advertising or advertising campaign, print adverts or television commercials, if you're looking at the the values the, the the values advertising campaign are portraying or enforcing in society you can take you know values like family honesty uh, uh, integrity productivity efficiency and you can see in terms of value emphasis so there are different ad advertising you can also go through content analysis you can apply discourse analysis you can also, you know, the cultural meaning embedded in an advertising campaign, right? Discourse analysis, textual analysis, the what does the text say in an advertising campaign? So there are different ways of analyzing advertising and advertising campaign. So uh, Neha, I, I think, I think uh, uh, you are most welcome. Uh, you please get in touch with Professor Ananda and she will share my email with you. And if you want, you can you can you can you can write to me, and I will be more than happy to uh, happy to help you and and tell you whatever I know. Lovely, sir. Uh, so we have one more. Uh, we have a lot of questions, but I'll yeah. uh, put out a few, sir. Um, okay, one second. Yeah. So we have uh, Mr. Arvind. The, he says, what is the difference between traditional medium, electronic medium, and non-electronic medium? In today's context, sort of the uh, the differentiation is getting blurred, right? So Exactly. So, uh, uh, Arvindji, uh, you can classify media in different ways. Uh, one is traditional and one is non-traditional. One is online and another is offline. You can also classify media in terms of primary media, secondary media, and also uh, offbeat media and off track media, folk media. So you can classify media in different ways. But what has happened uh, in an age of convergence, you know, you all older media forms, you find them in newer media outlets. This is convergence. So uh, yes, but but when you're talking about convergence, convergence is merging or coming together or integration of all media in in a unified multimedia platform. But nonetheless, what you call uh, traditional media, I call that divergence. Radio is going to be there for its own distinct attributes. Television is going to be there. Now, television, you see web series, but it's, it's television. Radio has become a car medium, right? You also have internet radio. So the basic attributes of media, what you say, divergent, it will remain the same. So yes, uh, uh, so you have an online platform, you have a convergence, you are there, but nonetheless, you also have offline media, which you now we call it traditional media, or which you call it, divergence so convergence and divergence are going to be there uh, uh, you see I'll give you an uh, analogy of uh, when you are traveling uh, somewhere on the roads what you see you see limousines you see Maruti you see BMW you see Land Cruiser you see you know so similarly it is in the case of media you have radio you have television you have offline online they all are going to be there they all are going to be there people say that the uh, print media the printed newspapers are going to disappear 
But look at the data. The re, specifically, the India is a country where the 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 appetite for more information. I will not say knowledge. I'll say information is so much that the, the print readership is going up. So you have online media. We are accessing news through social media also. And I heard the social media has become one of the potent entertainment medium. So that's another story. So yes, but but having said so, to conclude, the traditional media uh, and new media uh, both are going to uh, both are going to be there. Yes. Yes. Uh, sir, we have this question from uh, Mr. Emmanuel. In 2017, uh, he was a Congo trainee from uh, at IIMC. He's asking, is media literacy more relevant for media producers or media consumers? And how to link media literacy to media ethics for journalists? Uh, uh, Mr. Emmanuel, uh, uh, you are from two... 2017 batch uh, uh, I think you are from development journalism course and I used to teach a paper communication studies to uh, to development journalism batch in the year 2002-2004 uh, media literacy is relevant for all of us it's not only for media producers or media consumers is relevant for all, all of us is applicable for all of us uh, uh, um, so uh, so it is relevant for all of us and it is relevant for all of us I, I did talk about different media stakeholders only media media producers I mean you know uh, I think uh, we are also supposed to be media literate and second is media literacy versus media ethics. Uh, uh, I think being media literate is the ability to analyze media content for oneself, for the society, for the larger God. And media ethics is, again, it's coming to the moral aspect of you know, media values. So yes, uh, uh, so I think uh, media literacy is for one and all. Wonderful, sir. We'll, um, we have a lot yes. of questions. Again, I, I have to I know, I know, uh, Yes. We have this question by Aditya Bukhari. He's asking, what is the future of multilingual content and translation in the new digital age, especially with the automated technology that's already existent. He's asking, what is the future of multilingual content and translation? You see, as of now, the language of the software is predominantly English. But if you want to reach out to all those people who are non English speakers or the non English media consumers. The future of multilingual content and translation is very bright. I was looking at one film on Hotstar Disney and I went to the sub subtitles, you know, the, the settings. And when I went to the settings and I could see there are four languages, English, Hindi, Tamil, Telugu. So why not Malayalam? Why not Bengali? So I think future of multilingual, you know, multilingual translation is very bright, very bright. Very true, sir. Uh, we've got someone uh, uh, called Mr. Dexter Masang, Masong Song. Uh, He's asking, media literacy is very important today since we are shifting to a more technology-centric world. However, given the digital divide over the world, how can we have an equal media literacy? How can we have equal media literacy? Digital divide is a real concern. 
four research scholars from the University of Minnesota. They wanted to find out whether media has the potential to create social inequalities in society. And they went out and they did an extensive research and their research the, the outcome of their research is called the knowledge gap theory. So those who have access to information, they are information rich, information hacks. Those who doesn't have the access to access to information, information has not. So the information rich and the information poor. And this is what we see in the context of digital world. A digital, uh, digital, digital, digital uh, divide is a real concern. And digital divide in the context of affordability, in the context of, you know, software access to software and the hardware and we're talking about multilingual also access to language the dominant language of software is english so i think i think it's a real real concern the society the civil society the governments uh, uh, across the world must strive towards digital dividend so digital divide to digital dividend should be our focus should be our agenda should be the focus of governments and should be the focus of civil society and once we have once there is a digital access to everybody then only we can talk about dig uh, digital literacy or media literacy sure yes of course there is an overwhelming number of questions that you all sent I, out to us I we know, I know. We're really thankful to you for the same. But unfortunately, we can't answer all of them during the live session. I'm going to take just one last question. I really apologize. But I'll surely compile all these questions. And uh, Firoz, sir, I'm going to send them across to you. And we'll definitely ensure that their answers reach there. No, no matter how much time it takes. Now, I will be replying to all of them one by one. Thank you so it much. It will be my pleasure. And I will be giving them more information now at this point of time since we have limited time and we are online. So, but but when I reply them, uh, my reply is going to be very thoughtful. My reply is going to be very informed reply. And I will also be providing them with some links and resources for further reference. So, I, I mean, I will be more than happy, yes. So you said all media messages are constructed. So what is your opinion about media news? Oh, this I can go on and on and on. <laughs> <laughs> this I can go on and on and on. See, let me just, uh, uh, Margaret, uh, just one thing. Uh, what you see is news what you know is your opinion no what you know is your background and what you know is your opinion now take any typical stories and see how a particular news story is embedded opinionated and how much of how how much of opinion and how much of one's background has gone into creating a new story. So you will realize that every new story is literally constructed. Now, as I said, I can go on and on. And if you want to ask me, I will be, you know, when I get these questions and when I have to give them in writing. But uh, let me just quote Lord Northcliffe. He was a media baron. You know what he said? He said, news is somebody somewhere wants to suppress and all the rest is advertising. Sure. That's one. Let me also invoke is toward hall and i 
he's my he's my one of my favorite media scholars when i quote marshall mcluhan i also quote stuart hall he said objectivity in news reporting is an operational fiction so you can you can very well realize that the how news stories are constructed it's an operational fiction and then no language no person can be truly uh, truly uh, uh, you know um, you know um, neutral so neutrality or objectivity in news reporting is an operational fiction nonetheless if we claim ourselves to be a media professional if we claim ourselves to be a journalist we must transcend our education background our own personal interest our political affiliations and anything and then claim ourselves to be a journalist and a media professional yes lovely sir huh. with this we come to the end of our session today i would like to thank dr feroz for a speech that was simply excellent and i'm so happy that we had this happening today sir i can't tell you how happy i am i would also like to thank the management principal ma'am and other department faculty as well as the non teaching staff for their undivided encouragement and support you are a backbone for this webinar series to materialize and of course to our enthusiastic participants for their robust participation and umpteen number of questions thank you so much sir thank you very very much uh, kumara guru college of liberal arts and science uh uh uh, uh i hope i could add value to all the efforts you all are putting in and the lineup which you have for the entire webinar series is truly impressive and i am going to attend all of them without a fail and i am going to promote all of them i am already promoting it amongst my students and amongst my acquaintances and truly this is truly the need of the hour and commendable uh and it's an it's an excellent excellent effort on the part of uh, kumar uh, kumar guru uh, uh, college of liberal arts and science my heartiest best wishes to all of you you all may succeed and you all make a true impact thank you very much thank you so much sir I can't wait to continue this conversation and extrapolate to include more discussions on media literacy and disinformation age with Dr. Anubhuti Yadav tomorrow. She is the head of the department New Media as well as the course director for advertising and PR from the prestigious Indian Institute of Marketing, Delhi. I request our wonderful participants to please come back tomorrow, the twenty eighth of July, two thousand twenty, at the same time, three pm to four pm. uh we will now be sharing the feedback form link on the uh, on youtube as well as also on the screen right now you for you need to answer the give us the feedback along with the feedback code that is being mentioned on screen so that we can send over the certificates to you once again thank you so much sir and it's been Thanks. an entire pleasure to share this forum with you thank you thank you thank you so much thank sir you.